Cornell University student is in custody, charged by the Department of Justice with making violent anti-Semitic threats. Investigators say Patrick Dye was arrested yesterday, accused of online threats against Jewish students, including rape and murder. The DOJ also says Dye threatened to bring an assault rifle to campus to shoot Jews. And this comes amid a saddening surge in anti-Semitic threats and hate crimes across the U.S. And today, Attorney General Garrick, Merrick Garland even doubled down on his promise that the DOJ will combat these acts of hate, telling Jewish Americans, you are not alone. Amanda Silverstein is a sophomore at Cornell and is on the board of the school's Shabbat Center for Jewish Life. Amanda, glad you could be with us. Yes, thank nice you for joining you. us, uh, Amanda. This is such a disturbing story. How are you and, and your classmates doing in, in light of this? And what's the mood there on Cornell's campus right now? I think that everyone is just a little overwhelmed with shock, actually finding out that it was a Cornell student, you know, despite any any possibility that his, you know, remarks online, however violent they were towards me and my community, that they could have stemmed from a place of isolation and depression. Still being able to, you know, finally understand that it was in fact a Cornell student, someone we attend class with every day, who posed these threats to our lives um, is really shocking. And we're all just, you know, trying to figure out how to cope with it and to understand what really happened. So your university's president alerted the community about the anti-Semitic threats uh, made online. In your experience as a Jewish student, I mean, how bad has this gotten? How much worse has this gotten since the Hamas attack on October 7th? So prior to October 7th, I personally had never experienced anti-Semitism on campus. Um, we really do have an amazing Jewish community here at Cornell uh, that has grown substantially in recent years. However, since October 7th, um, there have been many instances where there were outward cases of anti-Semitism, including, you know, our posters of hostages little kids being torn down or vandalized uh, with the words free Hamas written over them. Uh, there have been cases of graffiti all over campus with the words F Israel, uh, Zionism is genocide and free Palestine written all over campus. Um, and, you know, the university did act to remove them, but it took time and having to walk to class, seeing that was really striking. Um, additionally, there were, you know, chants of from the river Pal from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free um, at various rallies around campus, um, which essentially calls for the destruction of Israel, which is situated in between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. So are you taking more precautions to protect yourself? Yeah, even, even my family members who are in Israel keep checking in with me. Um, they're more worried about my safety here on an American camp, college campus than, you know, they're worried about their own safety being in Israel right now. Um, and, you know, telling me don't engage with the protesters, you know, stay safe. I actually personally have a Jewish flag, an Israeli flag sticker on my water bottle. And I find myself, you know, trying to hide it sometimes when walking by these rallies out of fear for my own safety. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, both of us are sitting here, I mean, especially as parents. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and to think, I mean, we didn't even, I, I don't know, it's unfathomable that you are you feel, that they feel you're you're not safe on a U.S. college campus, worse off than, than they are in Israel. I mean, and, that just hammers at home. And if I may drill down on that, is it something that students brought to Cornell hmm. or something about the... What, what what people observe as the the teaching in many campuses about uh, about race, about Israel, about other things is this what is going on? So I personally haven't taken any of those courses related to the topic, so I can't speak specifically to what you know teachers who deal with this every day are saying about the issue in their classes. Um, but you know we have heard, history professors on campus, um, you know, commending Hamas for carrying out these attacks for, you know, raping and burning families, um, which is really striking and, you know, can only make me wonder, you know, what those students are thinking when that is their professor who, you know, is 
in in a sense, indoctrinating them to believe that, you know, Israel is some sort of monster and that, you know, according to that, all Jews are monsters who should be eliminated. Are they really that ignorant? Do you really think they are that ignorant? When I hear people chanting from the river to the sea all over campus, um, you know, my first thought isn't like, oh, I hate you. You really want to see me dead. You know, my first thought is that the majority of the people have no idea what they're saying. They genuinely do not understand the issues at hand. Uh, maybe they see pictures of, you know, injured Palestinians right now in Gaza, which, you know, makes my heart hurt as well. And it, it is understandable that someone could look at those images and feel pain for the Palestinian people and assume that Israel is the ultimate oppressor. Um, but a lot of the people who attend these rallies, who chant these harmful slogans, don't even know what they're saying and don't even understand the situation and the history there. Yeah. You know, polls show that, that older Americans tend to be more supportive of Israel, younger Americans less so. And I wonder, do you think that this is, do you feel safe on campus? You kind of answered, but I want you to dig into that a little bit. And do you think this is a temporary thing, a flare up because of the, the anguish that people justifiably feel about the deaths of innocents, no matter where? Um, I really hope it's temporary. I mean, what we're seeing around the country, even around the world right now is really, really horrifying. And growing up, um, I'm a third generation Holocaust survivor. I heard stories directly from my grandfather of his experience, how he survived Auschwitz and, you know, the horrors he endured uh, during his time in while in Germany and in the camps. And, you know, it it didn't seem like a reality. It seemed like I was, you know, hearing some sort of made up stories that couldn't possibly be true. But, you know, seeing them actually emerge in in real life and seeing people directly call for the destruction of the Jewish people in America in 2023 is is really shocking. And honestly, at first, I do think that Cornell was a little slow to, you know, take a direct stance against anti-Semitism because as, as an administration, it definitely is a difficult line to toe between free speech and, you know, calling out hate speech. But I think that, you know, since Sunday, when these direct threats to our community emerged, uh, the university has taken um, a very, very strong stance. And along with Governor Hochul and the, the state of New York has really acted swiftly to ensure our safety, which has been very comforting. You know, you're a member of the, the Chabad organization there on campus. You know what? I, I think you should bring some sort of guest speaker to teach students the definition of terrorism, what Hamas yeah. represents, what they do to people. There needs to be some type of education to, for these kids to understand what they're chanting if they indeed do not understand or have any idea what they're chanting. Clearly, that's the case. And and maybe, you know, maybe that's something your organization can take on, or at least the, the university should, to properly educate educate what Hamas is. Amanda, we're so yes, glad we got to talk to you. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.